All right, so we're going to start out with a little activity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play a few instrumentals of pop songs, um, and all, all from the last decade, and you'll have to guess the name of the pop song and the name of the artist. And I, I will provide you with no initial context of when the song was released. So. <laughs> Good job, guys. So, next one. No? No one? And... Chenu. It's Imagine Dragons, and the song is... Dracula. Yes! Good job, and let's do the last one. Oh, <laughs> you on? Uh, I think Taylor Swift and Basler. Blank space. Blank space. Yeah. Good job. All right, so good job to everyone who did guess the song, and if you didn't, I wouldn't blame you. Because pop music has actually become, has become to sound all the same and similar to each other. And that is exactly what I would define as the pop bubble. The pop bubble is a bubble, it is an imaginary space in which artists, producers, songwriters and the singers themselves have become confined in. This homogenization has occurred over the past 40 years with contemporary music beginning to sound all the same and similar to each other. So, next one. Now, as a musician myself, I have, I've come to ask myself how and why does this occur? I mean, after all, we do have better technology and we do have the availability to make more new and creative sounds. And I began to ask myself the questions, have we really run out of creativity at this point? Have, are there less talented musicians than there were before? Or how, how come this occurs? And in fact, the Spanish National Research Council has done a very deep study on this, revealing that, in fact, the harmonic complexity and the temporal diversity have decreased, while the loudness of pop music has increased. In simple terms, the harmonic complexity would be how complex a, mo a melody is and how diverse it is, whereas the temporal diversity would talk about its texture and its nuance. So quite ironically, it has become all about that bass, and music has, pop music has gotten definitely not better, but louder. And in fact, a big part of this is the loudness war. The loudness war refers to this war within the pop industry and producers fighting to make a louder song which will be heard by all of us. This has been done by increasing the loudness and using tools of mastering and compression. In fact, the most common tool used is called dynamic range compression. What it does is it takes the lowest, lowest sounding part of the recording and it matches its volume to the highest part of the recording. Essentially, a whisper would become as loud as a distorted guitar. Now I'm sure you can see how this damages the nuance and the texture of each song because it does not allow us to appreciate all of the elements which are in the original sound recording. Now, in the end, the final pr product we have is that we sacrifice the quality, the nuance, and the richness of the music, or just to have a louder sounding recording. Now, this, is the, this trend is also evident in the lyrics of contemporary music. Lyric complexity has dropped over the years, and we can see on this chart how the general trend is actually going down. On this side, we have the average grade level of the lyrics of pop's music, and here we have the years. It ranges from 2005 to 2014. And we can see over this short time period, we can already see the general trend forming and falling down. Now, this is measured using something called the flesh kincaid Readability Index. Basically, it is a tool which measures the amount of syllables and the range of syllables and the variance between them in a text. It is used for 
mostly school, school relevant information and reading tests which are provided. But here we can see that it has decreased over the recent years and currently pop music is at a second to third grade level lyric complexity. Now, the reason this has occurred is actually quite evident and easy to, to explain. It's the repetitiveness of the song has increased and a major part of this is the chorus and the hook. These parts of the song, which actually serve to grab your attention and to stick in your head, repeat much more often and much earlier on in the song. Now let's look at a few examples, and this is a very recent one by Ariana Grande. Uh, thank you, next. I'm sure you probably have heard it, and where she repeats the phrase thank you, next 27 times throughout the song. <laughs> or another great example would be by Megan Trainer, All About That Bass, and she repeats it 39 times throughout the song, which is quite impressive. <laughs> and this trend actually continues on with, within the pop bubble. It extends also to producers and songwriters. Now, two significant figures which can be accounted for this monopoly of producers and songwriters within the music industry uh, are known to be Max Martin and Lucas Gottwald. Now, these two men account for a large portion of the pop music currently being produced and written. Not only do they produce and write the music, but they also contribute to many of the pop uh, singers and stars we have today in the pop scenery. So, Let's just look at a few examples. Yeah. Um, here, Max Martin himself has written 22 number one singles uh, ranked on the top 100 billboard list. Now, the artists which he has worked, it, worked with include Britney Spears, Katy Perry, quite a lot of Katy Perry actually, uh, Maroon 5, Taylor Swift, The Weeknd, and I'm sure you can recognize many of these songs on here. Next slide we see that uh, Dr. Luke, or Lucas Gottwald, actually has uh, also a very large amount of number one hits, including, again, Katy Perry, Kelly Clarkson, Maroon 5, Avril Lavigne, Miley Cyrus, all of these famous pop, pop musicians that you very well know. So now that we understand what exactly is the pop bubble and how it occurs, I think we should go into look why does the pop bubble occur? In the end, I have come to answer my questions and to realize that actually that has nothing to do with the amount of talented singers we have or producers. In fact, I'm sure we have more new and original music being produced nowadays than we had in the 1960s. And in fact, their chances are there are more talented musicians than there are, right, than there were in the 1960s. So why does this happen? Well, in the end, it comes down to a simple risk assessment in business. As you probably know, change equals risk, and usually higher risk would equal a higher profit. But this is not necessarily true in, in the pop industry. In fact, it all depends on people's taste and what we like, we, what we the consumers like. So currently it is more expensive than ever to actually establish a pop musician with, inside the industry. It costs around half a million to three million dollars. and. If I, were invest, if I were making an investment of half a million to three million dollars, I wouldn't want to base, base it on blind faith. But then we come to look at how would we minimize this risk? How do we predict people's tastes and what the people will like and consume? Well, the tool that the pop industry uses is called the power of familiarity. More specifically, it is called the mere exposure effect. And it is a psychological phenomenon in which the more you see something and the more you familiarize yourself with it, the more you begin to like it. It is scientifically proven that the more you see a person or hear a song, each time you see it, a dose of dopamine is being released. And with each time you hear it over and over again, the bigger that dose of dopamine becomes. So let's do a little experiment. Think back to the first time you heard Gangnam Style or Anaconda or any such song. Think. Be honest with yourself, did you really like it the first time you heard, you heard it? Or were you kind of weirded out? Well, referring to myself, the first time I heard Gangnam Style, I, I questioned my thoughts and I was like, what kind of poor attempt is this of a pop song? But then as my friends were going around me and they were constantly singing it, I could hear it on the radio, I could hear it everywhere around me, I just couldn't resist but to start liking it. And this is exactly how producers are able to minimize risk and guarantee the return. 
In fact, most of the pop hits we have today can be referred to as completely inescapable. Imagine this, you're going down to the supermarket, you're in your car and you listen to the radio. You hear the newest Taylor Swift song. You go in the supermarket, you still hear news, the newest Taylor Swift song. No matter what we do, we're surrounded by technology nowadays. If we cannot escape most of the songs that, they're, that are put out there, especially the pop songs. And this is exactly how the power of familiarity is used in the pop industry to minimize the risk. Now, rem going back to the loudness word that I mentioned towards the beginning, we see how it can be combined to work with the power of familiarity. By reducing the dynamic range compression and making even the quietest parts of the song loud, they, in a way, take control of the volume. So even if you're listening to the song on low volume, you can still hear much of the instrumentals and they're able to grab your attention. Even more, this is the reason why the hook in the chorus would occur much more often, to increase that dose of dopamine being released, but also to grab your attention and to stick in your head so you don't forget the song. And in fact, this is the $3 million that the producers are investing, working hard in order to guarantee that you will hear their song and begin to like it. So, in the end, now that we've come to realize that the pop industry has this control over the music we hear, well, that is not necessarily true. Because nowadays, unlike the 1960s or earlier on, we have all these great tools for streaming music, and most of them free, which give us accessibility to the music we like. We can access huge amounts of music using the tools of Spotify, YouTube, Shazam, or I Apple Music. And this is great because what we come to realize is that we have the power of choice, what we listen to. But what really happens since the end is most of the time we end up being spoon-fed by the radio and the pop industry of what they are putting out. But I'm here to encourage you to actually use the tools we have and to find new music. For example, Spotify or any of the other tools, they suggest new music to you and similar sounding artists. And I'm sure if you go out there and you try to look at some of them, you'll be surprised by how many of them fit your taste and you will actually like. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying pop music is bad. I think pop music is great. It's energetic, it makes you want to jump around, dance, and free your mind. But what I am saying is that there's a lot, a ton of music being produced out there that in the end does not reach us. But we have the power to reach, we have the power to make that music accessible to us. In the end, we have the power to pop the pop bubble. Thank you.